Good morning, tubers. Welcome to a beautiful day. This 1986 Honda Ford Trax 200SX. Um, original owner, he beat it, given to the cousins. They beat it, they gave it back to him, and it sat for the last three years. We're going to try to get this thing running. I was told it needed a whole new top end, but I pulled the string. It sounds like it has compression. So, where are we going to start? We're going to start by finding out if we have any compression. Rather than bend and twist, let's get this taken apart a little bit. Yeah, that's frost. So, seed off. Plastic off, air cleaner off, right? Not all that hard. They left it loose. So, yeah, I'm going to get all that out of there. Just makes things go quicker. So, when working on this old stuff, you notice stuff like, how the heck did they break that weld there? Um, this plastic is supposed to be somewhat pliable. And even though the clamp's loose, it will not come off the carburetor. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they did. The thing that makes me nervous is this appears, I don't know how much moving you can see, right? So I hope they didn't break the neck on the uh, carburetor intake manifold. You always find the hacking, right? The trick is to get around it. Given that this won't slide off, I think I'm just going to cut it, right? I can hold this still, get the saw in there and just whack it. It's not the best way to do it, but, you know, sometimes you just got to meet hacking with hacking. So we got troubles. You see that intake manifold? It's not supposed to come off. So uh, that's the first thing they kind of ruined there. Right. You guys can see the flange. The slide is stuck in the carburetor. So I got to spray that. I just as soon not destroy the cable. Yeah, the cable's still alive. So, right. I'd rather not destroy that. I could get it as far as a compression check without too much trouble. Here's what the plug looks like. So, it was an oil burner at the time. Maybe that's why he says it needs a top end because it was burning oil. I don't care if they smoke a little bit. Better for the mosquitoes, eh? So, this is the first time I've seen it. This one actually has the case guard in it. I've, uh, I've never seen that before. Just in case somebody wants to build one, you could see what it looks like, right? It's just a plastic insert that keeps the chain from blowing through the case should you throw it so that's one thing I noticed the uh, wires the wire that would go on here is broken off right looks like so I don't know if the starters any good the plugs out now it's time to turn the motor around and we'll see <laughs> we'll see how much trouble we got we're all hooked up and No clanging, no banging, no bad sounds. Um, also, while I'm kind of looking, I'm always looking to see if there's a crack in the frame. This frame actually looks in really nice shape, so that's good. Maybe I'm going to be real lucky here. Well, it seems that both my jump packs soiled the bed. This one, you turn it on and nothing comes out, even though it says the battery is good. And the other one needs a charge, so old Harvey's got to set up the camera and start pulling. Up over 90 for dry compression. She'll start with that. Let's see what's going on with the ignition system. Get a little hot wire going on here. Now, the carburetor slide stuck in the mid position, which means you have the maximum area stuck right there. 
Um, there are a couple of different ways to do it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tap it down, and then pry it up and move it back and forth a couple of times, and hopefully it comes loose. Once again, this carburetor is probably junk. I'm probably going to go with the PZ27 manual choke, um, but I, I really do want to save the cable. Try a little tap down. Once you get it off the top, it seems to go pretty easy. I sprayed it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to work it back and forth a few hundred times to get it to come loose. Seems like there's a ring around the top that it won't bust through. So I have to get the intake manifold back on. And you guys saw that crack in it. So we're just gonna give it the old electrical tape to kind of keep it from breathing out the side. That should do it. Right, and then to seal it, <laughs> we're gonna hit it with some old Elmer cement here. And hopefully that'll give me a tight enough fit, a vacuum tight fit such that uh, this thing will fire up. So the carburetor is on there, kinda. Actually feels halfway decent. Probably on for the first bump. You can see we got our intravenous gas bottle on there. And this is kind of a first start, so I'm gonna hit it with a little 40 to one. What do we need? We need spark. So we got this rat's nest in here. Right, and looks like, I don't know, they just unplugged everything. Now, here's the wires that come from the motor. And luckily, Honda is really, really consistent with this. Now, what you want to do is unplug the two yellow ones. That's where the stator power goes up to the voltage regulator. So you want to unplug those just in case you got a short circuit. What do we have left? We have a blue and yellow, which goes to the pulse generator. You got a green, which is the other side of the pulse generator. And you have the black and red, which is what would power up the... Um, CDI unit, right? Your AC powered CDI unit. But we're not going to use that. I'm just going to unplug these and use these two and my portable CDI. Hopefully we get spark and we get this thing fired right up because I'm running out of time. So it appears as if my jump packs are not bad. It appears as if the starter soiled the bed. Uh, there goes another 50. Anyway, we got it hooked up, right? You got the blue and yellow to the input of the pulse generator. You got the ground. You got a ground on the head there. We got the spark plug wire hooked up. I kind of like to go through a quick pre-check, even on camera, because every once in a while I'll do something stupid, like hook up the spark plug wire to the coil on the bike when I'm not powering, powering the coil on the bike. So there we are, she's on, she's got gas, she's got choke. Let me set up the camera and we'll see if we can't get this thing started. So you guys remember, we checked the oil yesterday and I followed up with a check today. And let's see how she does. Well, sounds good. It's not trying to start, but it sounds pretty good. All right, I'm going to hit it with starting fluid because I'm 
not as young as I used to be. If I don't get anything, then I'm going to start checking the spark. I don't know how to pull back like that. It normally indicates that there's ignition. <laughs> A little something. Choke. <laughs> well, I think I've demonstrated that there's some life. Dave, I hope I did a little hop for you there. I didn't notice any smoke. Um, Considering how kludgy everything is hooked up, that's not bad. <sighs> Next time you see this thing, I think I'm going to order it a starter. Right? Why be yanking on a string that's beating up on your fingers if you don't have to be? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I need you all to keep your feet down, your heads up. And no smoke, so maybe things are going to... Actually, it even sounded half decent. So, anyway, take care. We'll see you all soon.